Welcome to Fox and Friends on a Saturday morning. You're probably just waking up. We're not. We've been up for a while. Yeah, a long time. A I've long been up time. For hours. Ed Henry, Rachel Campo Stuffy. Good to see you. And it's not opposite day. Ed and I just switched sides of the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Have a little right? fun. Mix it up. Mix it up. Yeah, you Life's have a about great show. to get up a little bit. We're going to have a great show this Saturday morning. Join us for all four hours. In fact, the president will be in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania That's 18, right. later on today, this evening. Special so election. This channel will be covering his speech this evening. We'll be covering it tomorrow morning as well. But his mindset. Very much on the other side of the world. Big news breaking at the end of this week that uh, it looks like that guy on the left mm -hmm. and that guy on the right might be meeting face to face before uh, the month of May comes to fruition. This the president tweeted about it yesterday. New information uh, about that potential meeting saying this. He said the deal with North Korea is very much in the making and will be, if completed, a very good one for the world time and place to be determined. So still a lot of open-ended issues on this particular meeting, but it looks like it'll happen. Wait, but there are, some I mean, there are some concessions leading up to the meeting. So uh, Kim Jong-un uh, Jong said that they'll, they'll meet in two months. However, they have to um, stop all their tests between we now told and them then. They have yeah, to we stop. told them yep. to stop all their tests. And we are continuing our sanctions. Yep. So um, nothing's going to be let up other times. In other agreements, those things have not been in place. Correct. Wait, hang on. Meeting. You're saying there might be peace? Because I've been following I along know. for the last year, and I heard that the president was starting World War III. Death. Wait, <laughs> so for maybe his yes. strategy is playing out well? It's No, maybe brinksmanship works. Maybe deals are only made through pressure. When you tell peace them you're going to be met... There you go. Right. As opposed to peace through weakness. Fire and fury, they don't want fire and fury. And interesting, because a former Obama official who was more in the Clinton camp, admittedly, but Philippe Reines, who was uh, a top aide and a senior advisor to Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State, uh, was on Fox last night saying he didn't like the way President Obama approached North Korea either. I've always thought, I, when I worked for the Obama administration, I hated the way we handled North Korea. I hated the way Bush did. It was always treating them like they deserved to be treated as an equal. Um, I thought we should just ignore them. You know, right. I, I at one point wanted to say, if you can't launch a rocket that doesn't reach, you know, the outer atmosphere, we're not going to talk about you. But President Trump, you know, he he uh, inherited something a little different. He inherited North Korea at a time when they've been harder to ignore. That was a remarkable bit of truth there, because he was yes. also, if you listen closely, saying. I always thought, as a senior State Department advisor in the Obama administration, it's best to ignore Kim Jong-un. That's largely what the Obama administration was doing. Yes. Right. And then, as he said himself, President Trump inherited this. Right. And also, he was a former Clinton person as well. Mm -hmm. And Clinton had the same strategy as uh, Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. And we saw that this didn't work. And, you know, the State Department's uh, and their experts are always saying, we know the way to handle these kind of guys like Kim Jong-un. And the truth is, he's just a bully. And, it, and throw out the script from the State Department and follow your gut. And that's what Donald, Tr uh, Donald Trump has done, the president has done. And that's why we're here right now. Philippe, most famous for misspelling the Russian reset button, by the way. Just small note. Was he the one uh, he was, yes, that? he was. That's but I, well, the, one of the things I loved He's about his quote, for that, uh, probably for other things, I've known him okay, 20 years. I want to be fair saying, to him. But he, he said in there, he treating them like they deserve to be treated as an equal. And that's such a difference between this White House and the Obama White House, whether it's North Korea, Iran, Cuba, even the UN. They look at the UN and say, everyone's equal. And, right. and Trump's saying, no, America is a strong, powerful country that should lead in this world. Well, and that really matters. Of the Obama White House, Susan Rice is back. There's a new book coming out that basically says that she told the White House cyber team to, quote, knock it off when they floated various tough options to go after Russian meddling in the 2016 election. This is fascinating yeah. because all we keep hearing is two things, that Donald Trump as a candidate was colluding with the Russians, we don't have any evidence of that yet, number mm -hmm. one. And number two, we're hearing Donald Trump as president hasn't done anything to stop Russian aggression heading into the midterms. Now this book is suggesting, wait a second, the Obama people knew this was going on and didn't do anything. So Susan Rice and, the president, and, and President Obama must like you know talk about this, because remember, his famous strategy, he said that he called Putin and said, or he told Putin, 
to knock it off. The same <laughs> words that she oh, used. Yes, that's you remember point. that? That's knock right. it off. This is not how you handle these kinds of situations. And I'll say that, you know, the more we know, the more we're learning about um, the Obama administration, the more we're seeing that they probably could have done more that's exactly to stop right. this. And they didn't think it would have an impact on the outcome of the election. They also, most importantly, thought Hillary Clinton was going to win the election and it wouldn't ultimately matter. Uh, now it's coming back that when it mattered the most, the Obama team did not take Trump. on the Russians in their attempt to meddle in our elections. That's very different than collusion. Well, Joel, Joel Rosenberg, he's the author of The Kremlin Conspiracy, says it's almost incomprehensible that the national security advisor, Susan Rice, for Obama, did nothing to stop the meddling. Listen. It is incomprehensible that in the midst of a presidential campaign, a general election, that a national security advisor would tell a team of people dealing with Russian attacks, aggressive attacks, and they were relentlessly hitting us from every possible direction. And this team of government officials were trying to figure out, A, how to stop it, then how to counter it, then possibly how to punish the Russians mm -hmm. to make sure they would stop it for good. The national security advisor of President Obama tell them to stand down, back off. And essentially, in the end, they did practically nothing. They knew that the Russians were targeting multiple states, specifically swing states. I will say, to be fair, Ed, which I do every once in a while. Yeah, I like hearing that. <laughs> they probably thought that if they went too hard in one direction, there yeah. would be perceived to be a political motive. Right, but and that it, they were helping Hillary Clinton. That they could, right. they could have been helping Hillary so Clinton. So there, there is something to be said for the administration, the Obama administration, trying to figure out how do we do this. Also, uh, this book is, is saying that Susan Rice felt like if we struck back too hard against Russia on the eve of the election, it might inflame it to the point that they might do more damage to our right. election. The point is you gotta do something. You know, I mean, well, and I think right. conservatives like would be a lot more understanding of what happened during the Obama years if the Obama administration hadn't had his fingers so yeah. much in trying and to say that Trump colluded with the Russians. Correct. That's exactly That's right. If they the didn't then is. boomerang it back around and say, no, right. Trump Look, was actually doing it. Another thing the president talked sin. about in the campaign was this double standard where Hillary Clinton uh, and the email server was not secure, and yet there was this Navy sailor uh, who got in a lot of trouble, faced criminal charges. Uh, and Christian Saucier, you see him right there. President yesterday decided, I'm going to do something about That's it. Right. He promised it. He talked about it in the campaign. This sailor took a couple of photos of his uh, classified submarine, innocuously so, no intent oh, to share. Almost somebody. like a yeah. self selfie, like a memory. Yeah, like, hey, I was here. This is what I Anyway, he got hit with a year in prison. Uh, and, and house arrest. And house arrest. And his, you know, his record has been tainted. Well, he's been pardoned. And Sarah Sanders, the press secretary, talked yesterday about it. Listen. The president has pardoned Christian Saucier, a Navy submariner. Mr. Saucier was 22 years old at the time of his offenses and has served out his 12-month sentence. He has been recognized by his fellow service members for his dedication, skill, and patriotic spirit. While serving, he regularly mentored younger sailors and served as an instructor for new recruits. The sentencing judge found that Mr. Saucier's offense stands in contrast to his commendable military service. The president is appreciative of Mr. Saucier's service to the country. So Pete spoke with Christian Saucier last week. Let's take a look at what he said. Obviously, there's two different sets of laws in this country for the politically elite and for, you know, those lower level individuals, Americans like myself. And I think that's very upsetting uh, on a basic level for most people, it should be at least, that um, a different standard of justice is applied. And I think my case, or case draws a very clear example of that. Obviously, President Trump firmly believes that, you know, I was over punished. I mean, he, he mentioned it numerous times before and after being elected. And I think that uh, President Trump, you know, I think he knows that in my heart, I understand I made a mistake and I, and I accept a responsibility for it. So uh, pretty cool story where the guy, he already served in prison. He's already done his time. Yeah. He just wants a clean record and so by the way, forward. Very remorseful. I mean, he yeah. took, unlike mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, he took full responsibility for what he did. He said, I did the wrong thing. Here's a picture, by the way, of his wife. Um, uh, do we have that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is from their Facebook page. You know, he gets, to, he gets to be now with, uh, you know, his wife and daughter. He's been on house arrest. Now he gets to go outside with them. Right. He missed the death of his grandmother. Um, mm. And well, now we're going to talk he, to him this morning. He's yep, coming on 9 that's 15 right. you're gonna have him Eastern on. Time. We'll be that's right, right here. So, very cool when you see someone who uh, was, was, you know, mistreated maybe the way it was supposed to, but mistreated when you compare it to the way others were treated. Yeah, double standard. Uh, get, a fair, right. get a fair chance. We want equal justice under the law. And, and new